Oh, no. um, so the only, what I didn't do is add any vanilla. Let's get some vanilla in there before we go any further. Okay, now you always want to add your vanilla before you add your flour. Okay, there we go. About two-thirds of a capful. Now this is good vanilla here. This is this is that homemade vanilla that my friend Anita gave me. With her her jelly her vanilla beans. Oh. Okay. Alright, so now what we want to do is add our flour and our baking soda. So let us, okay, so I want to use about five and a half cups of flour, and then we need to use some baking soda, too. Okay, so there's my flour container. And what I like to do is, okay, so five and a half, okay, so if I did three in one pour and two and a half in the other, that's going to be what I'm looking for as far as the measurement is concerned. And then that's going to allow me a little bit of space to add my baking soda into my flour and mix it in. So that's really what I'm looking for here. Okay, so what's this? This is that's almost two and a half. That should be two and a half right there. Yep, that's two and a half. Okay, so now and I also need two nice teaspoons of baking soda. Okay, now remember, soda spreads, powder rises. We want these to spread. Okay, I'm going to give it just a little smidge more because I packed those down good. Okay, so there's, there's our... Here, actually, I'm going to use this to stir this in like so. Right, I do the stirring you prefer. You're going to avoid that pocket. Yeah, we don't want a big pocket of baking soda that's going to react before the cookie even makes it onto the tray. All right, so there's that. And now we need another three cups. So now we can actually be a little heavy if we needed to be because of the nature of the peanut butter cookie. Okay, so, but this is three three cups pretty much right on the money there. So, let's put that in. Now, remember, we can always add more. Can't really take it back out once it's already in. So, I'm leaving it at the five and a half. Let's move this over here. I'm leaving it at the five and a half cups. If I need to add another half a cup, no problem. I can always do that. Okay, so... Very gently, I'm going to jog this mixer. I don't want it to puff up all in my face. Because <laughs> it's happened. Y'all know it. All right, nice and gradual. And then all of a sudden, we're going to hear that. And this mixer starts working. Yeah, hear it? <laughs> now we got to turn it up a little bit. And... Before it is all done, we want to give it another scrape, okay? Feel how it is. Now, not only am I scraping the bowl, I'm also getting a feel for the texture of the dough. And if it feels too loose, then I will add that extra half cup of flour. Let me get it all all the way from the edge, and then I'm just gonna stick my finger in and give it a give it a feel. All right, let's see what's going on here. Mm. Okay, well it's not sticking to my hand. Okay, and it's forming into kind of a ball shape. And it does form into a ball. Now, as soon as it heats up a little bit in my hand, it, it starts to stick. So, I'm going to add to the bottom. Okay, actually, okay. Now, the bottom is the stickiest part, okay, because that's where the flour, the flour, I mean, as it makes its way down, it still, you know, it has a hard time making it all the way down to the very, very bottom because um, it's got to basically... Um, you know, offset the fat that's down there. So anyway, let me take a half a cup of flour, okay? 
right there. Here's my half a cup. I'm going to pour a little over here, a little over here, and then a little down here. Okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this that's on the paddle and make sure it's down in there. Okay? Yeah. Uh-huh. This is why we wash our hands 50 million times a day when we bake cookies and cakes. <laughs> yeah, because our hands are on camera because there's no point. It's like if you're watching John most of the time washing his hands. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Well, the, I tell you, the hands are the most important tools, you know. That's just oh, the way it boy, is. I hear it straining. Yep. See, now look at it. See how it's starting to pull away? Yeah. That's what we're looking for. can tell just by the sound that it's right and that's what we're looking for now the more I mix this okay then it's gonna soften up even more and I don't want to do that because even though it's softening up it's actually stiffening up you're creating a gluten which you know is great in Italian bread but not in the peanut butter cookies so that being said <laughs> we're done mixing Definitely done mixing. Oh, you know what else is good for gluten? What? Pan, uh, pan fried dumplings. You know those pot sticker things? Uh, no. Oh, it's kind of like a Chinese thing. It's like a, it's like a dumpling. Uh huh. It's packed. It's basically like uh, pasta around like a uh, kind of like shredded pork. Okay. And they kind of mix it together, and they make a little ball, and then they wrap it in this um, dough consistency. Mm hmm. And you know, they really try to get as much gluten into it as they can. Okay. Uh, I'm, a, delicious. I'm a pan fried dumpling junkie. Okay. If you've never had them, you've got to try them. Yeah. Okay, so let me real quick give a little clean up here. Take two seconds, and you'll let me wash my hands. No, I'll take it over and I will wash my hands. Okay. And I have a system. I'm just trying it's to a, I know, I know, but it's a system. Yeah. You, you, I mean, you take the dishes over, then you wash your hands. That makes sense. Right? Yeah. Okay. Alright, and on the way back, we grab a pan, so that we can make some cookies. <laughs> Alright, so I want to do those. Alright, so what I want to do is a couple different things. Okay, we'll start with these guys. Okay. Now this dough, I scraped and I prodded, and I know darn well that this dough is consistent all the way down to the bottom of the bowl. Okay? Now, if I wasn't confident about that, what I'd be doing is just simply taking this, pouring it off into like a salad bowl, and then whatever's on top, which would be in the bottom, just mix and spread in, okay? But I don't need to do that because I've fussed over it so much already. That being said, I'm going to scoop right out of this bowl, okay? And this is a pretty large cookie scoop. This is about, um, this is just a touch smaller than the regular cookie scoop that you would find at the grocery store in the ice cream aisle, okay? So... Anyway, that being said, I know for a fact, because I've done it before, that when I take a nice level scoop like this and put it right here in the corner, okay, and then I put another one in this corner, and then one in this corner. Notice they're all perfectly across, perfectly even. And what I'm doing is I'm using the bowl, see? 
To level it, level off my scoop. Okay. Make sure that there's no air pockets. Okay, you don't want any air pockets in there. So I know that they're all going to be the same size. Okay, and I also know that with this particular size scoop, three by five seems to be the perfect amount of space in between the cookies for your baking. All right, so, so they don't run into each other, right? Yeah, if I if I tried to do like four by six, which you know would be normal for cookies on a pan, gonna yeah, they're going to be mating. <laughs> they're going to be touching and mating. So, but three by five is pretty much perfect. All right, one more, and here we be. Okay, so. Normally with peanut butter cookies, you know, you want to use the fork and dock them and all that. Um, what I've learned is that before we hit it with the fork, it's best to just hit them like that with the tops of our hands. Not, not pushing down hard. Just a little. Okay. Now, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. All right. That's good. That's all you need. You can go back the other way with them. Some people do. A lot of people do. Not everyone does. You can do whatever you want to do. They're your cookies. All right. All right. So those are ready. So those are ready for the oven. 